everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint this really adorable nighty night gnome step by step. It's a cute little gnome on a mushroom in acrylic paint on canvas. I'm going to show you every part of the process of how you create this. So basically, my husband, who is on the mic, hey guys, tracks me with one of our five amazing robotic cameras, zooming in so you can see all the action. And the idea of that is, is that as we go along in our step by step process. If I explain everything very thoroughly and John zooms in and you can see what's happening, you're going to be able to create your own version of this gnome for yourself brilliantly at home. Just painting along with me. And that's kind of nice to paint in the comfort of your own home, isn't it? I think so. Isn't he cute? I really like him. He's so cute. All right, let's get into the materials and everything we got today. So this sweetie pie, like our other gnomes, he is the second gnome in a very long gnome series. Um are all on 9 by 12 artboards. So on our artboards, we really, really like to do wishes and intentions and positive thoughts just from our community to put out there. So the first wish is we're wishing for Kim, for her and her oldest to have a great new leg of their adventure as her oldest is leaving the nest. We're also wishing for uh, funding for St. Jude. So uh, as St. Jude's Children's Hospital Mm -hmm. goes out and tries to create cures and positivity in the world. We're hoping that they always have the resources that they need. Oh, my reading glasses are up here. Um, we're, I'm also personally wishing to help everyone have a great gnome painting. So you guys want to post it online. You want to tag it and you're proud of it. And then also personally, I'm wishing that Acrylic April is huge and that everybody comes along for all 30 days and tries to do the whole challenge because I think that would be awesome. Now, on the palette here, we have the colors. Cad Red Medium, Quinacridone Magenta, Deoxazine Purple, Thaloithecane Green, also known as Thalo Green, Thaloithecane Blue, also known as Thalo Blue. We have Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Yellow, and Titanium White. So those are, those are our basic colors. But look, on this one, we're not doing so much mixing that you can't just change colors out really, really easily. These are just what I'm using to get this result, but you can make little adjustments if you need to. Yeah. Now, on the website that you can come grab and print out is the step-by-step -step so that you can follow along and know where we are in the painting and not feel so lost. The other thing is there's a traceable, but I also provided a simple grid. So these are all resources that you can have that will help you in your goals. Let me tape them up because they want to bend over. It's a nice heavy cardstock. Now, also, if you go to the description down below, I like to hide all kinds of information in there. The colors, places to get brushes, products that you might like or need, and also, very importantly, a link to the video page for this project. And that's where all those resources are. You don't have to do anything to get them. You just click the link and you go there and you grab them. You can also leave comments and even rate the difficulty of the painting for a future artist, hmm. which I think is kind of cool. All right. To begin this, I will erase my wonderful watercolor words, putting them into the universe. And I'm just going to use a big brush. This, If you want to know what it is, it's a number 12 round. I'm not doing the painting with it, but it makes a nice erase the watercolor words hmm. brush. Look at it. Nice scumbly flagged bristles doing their job. So I do that so that the words don't show through on the painting. Um, I want the intention in the universe, but I uh, don't want the words bleeding through the painting. Right. So that's why I do that. Put that to a side. And I'm going to take my number eight cat's tongue, and I'm going to show you how to do kind of like a Van Gogh style sky. Mm. Right. And this is really cool. I oh, got it. Just wish the stuff would stay up. Okay. This is really cool because it's very beginner friendly. So if you're new to painting, it doesn't require a lot of blending, which is probably the most challenging technique for a new artist. This is just about creating curved strokes in a nice little pattern as they go around. Now, we will start. I'll put a little mark here. Right about here to begin our little Van Gogh style thing. And we're going to begin with just blue and white. Begin with a light color. See how light that is? Don't want to lose what I've got going on. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to come around. And what I want you to do is curve your brush strokes, kind of layering them around each other. See how I'm doing? Yeah. Curving them. 
And to curve, you kind of twist the brush in your hand. If you've never done that before, there's a very careful little twist in my fingers that happens that allows that to, you know, feel a little more curved. I'm gonna get a little more blue so you can see how those brush strokes curve. This is what we're gonna be doing for step one. Getting these curved brush strokes going. Sometimes I'm gonna get loosely mixed, more white. And I weave these in. I do go back over strokes that I've done before to kind of integrate them, but I'm not blending them as much as layering them, if that makes sense. And we're still doing a fairly light blue here at the center, because we want this to feel like our gnome is in front of a moon glow. Because that's where a gnome would be, right? A night-night gnome? Mm -hmm. The gnome in charge of dreams and night-night would definitely be there. How are you guys doing today? Good. <laughs> We're gnoming. We're rolling with our gnomies. <laughs> 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 so you can see I'm just on the corner of this brush and doing that. Now, if you don't have my cat's tongue brush, guess what? You're fine. You're okay. You could use a round brush and get a very similar effect and not be unhappy at all. So don't feel like in these projects that if you don't have my exact tool, that your whole well-being on the project is over because it's not. Now I've rinsed out my brush and I'm coming on the tip and I'm getting a little more white and I'm going to get a lot more blue. And I'm going to begin to weave what you're seeing is a darker color. And notice that I'm still kind of curving these short brush strokes. Yeah. Challenges you may have is that maybe your paint, right, is kind of uh, not covering the canvas like there's little white spots. Mm -hmm. That's a thing that can happen. Uh, you either need to do a couple layers or sometimes adding a little more water, a little more, not like a lot more, to your paint will help that coverage. And also f be fairly confident because there's many, many layers here. So even if you're having a little trouble initially getting coverage, you'll get there. As we go out, we're going to continue to make these brush strokes. And now, they will you, be darker and darker. Are you making the brush strokes larger as they go out? As I go out, I'm going to make them larger and a little bit longer. And I'll grab more blue paint. And I might get in there, like if I'm like, oh, that's a lot of paint, you know showing then i might come in and push that down i want this corner to be a bit darker and i really want this blend right here to be nice so what i may do is just come here with white right where i had to come back in with the blue and you can come outward with white to round it out see how i'm doing yeah so this is a back and forth little dance if this reminds you a bit of Vincent Van Gogh, that's because this methodology of putting down paint was really kind of pioneered by him. Hmm. And so it's definitely reminisce. It's a little different. His brushstroke was certainly a little more defined and refined and smaller, but we can use his concepts to help our painting experience today. That's just looking nice, isn't it? It really is. Just be patient with it. Don't panic, be patient. And then when you're like, oh, I kind of like that, I'm going to rinse out. As I come out, I'm going to take a little bit of my just pure blue. And I'm going to begin the deep, dark part of the night for the night, night gnome. Because it's night, night. <laughs> it is. Night, it's a really night. cool night. It's a cool night. <laughs> and that is the cat's tongue brush, right? This is a cat's tongue brush. But use uh a round if you don't have this brush. You can get this brush a lot of locations. But, you know, what if it's your first day painting? You don't know if you want all the brushes. So just use what you have. Have fun. And then see if it's like something you want to do more of. That's what I would do. When I take up a new hobby, that's pretty much what I do do. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to say thank you to Dari D. She just says, thank you, Sherpa, for your amazing con content. I finally caught you live. You taught me how to paint, and I appreciate it. Oh my goodness, Dari D, that is so nice. I feel like we've got to do some bubbles for Dari. For sure. All right, let's bubble up. We can take a minute, let everybody catch up if you guys are painting along live. 
we're going to say thank you to Dari. Get some bubbles. Thank Bubble you, Dari. And thank you guys, Bubble. all of our patrons Bubbles. and all of our, our, our supporters out Bubbles. there and all you guys who share on, on other social media and you paint along and share your paintings with us. We really appreciate it. It's the snowflakes for you. It, it, it makes our community bigger and we love being here with you. Yeah. All this stuff matters. Like kind comments on other people's paintings. These all matter. Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel so good. Sippy, sippy. Mm. I hope my coffee stays warm today. I squeeze out a little bit more of my Thalo Blue. So Thalo Blue is an interesting thing because its real name is Thalo Ithacane. But I guess artists just didn't want to type that out. Or it's, write it out. Or, or write it out or deal with it. it on any level. And the paint companies agreed, so they shortened the name to Thalo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun paint fact. Artists be a little lazy. <laughs> you know, and you don't know this the first time as a husband being sent to the store. And you're, they say, polyethacane blue. And, and you're like, okay. But they don't have that. Thaloethacane. Thaloethacane. Yeah, okay, so right. I even got that wrong. So, you know. <laughs> but I do think that's something that happens. You know, your partners go to the store for you. And it can be really hard to help them uh, figure out what they need. I have a special list in our Facebook group that's sort of helpful for that. If you guys uh, are trying to send your partner to the store. I just took some of my Diox Purple. My doxazine purple, and I put it into my phthalo blue. And this is going to make the deepest color. And you can see we're getting there. Yes, some of the canvas is fighting back. But we fight back harder, do we not, we sir? Do. <laughs> do we fight as hard as a llama? No, nobody fights as hard as a llama. Man. <laughs> so heedless would say they are smart prey <laughs> <laughs> i didn't really get that in the book but now i know oh smart prey i got it smart prey like three people who were like i know that reference just got all tickled i know our donna knows because i sucked her into the books <laughs> All right, okay. So everyone's going to be like, what books? We want to know, too. I know. I, I'm letting them ask, though, just in case they didn't. Oh, I'm sure. I'm like, <laughs> it's like the 30-second delay hasn't even come up here yet. But... <laughs> <laughs> they, might not, they might be like, I don't need to know what you read. I'm here to paint. Down thumb. <laughs> so, so what is it? Um, so I am reading a series of books by Annette Marie, and there was, the, there was the Guild Codex, and there was a spinoff called Taming Demons for Beginners, and there's a character in it named Zeelis who is uh, highly motivated by cookies, and I am also highly motivated by cookies. So. <laughs> and one of the things that he, he recommends in one of the books is for the other character to be smart prey. Ha. So we were watching an Animal Planet show, and they were showing llamas who were just, like, throwing down and, like, taking on mountain lions left and right, and I was like, oh, that's smart prey. Huh. So that was a long rabbit hole into a cultural reference. <laughs> But I do like, I do like Lynette Marie. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think I, uh, about to, yeah, actually, I'm about to complete everything she's ever written, including the short stories. So it might be a problem. Because <laughs> you're not allowed to, you know, misery your favorite authors. You know, I didn't understand that as a young girl, but now as I'm coming to the end of these series and I'm like, these authors are not writing, like, at the speed I'm reading, I'm like, oh, I see why you would, like, tie a guy to a bed. <laughs> And force him to finish a book. I get where that comes from. <laughs> There's, but, but, and then I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm just saying know, I understand the, and relate I, to the feeling. I, I think that may actually be a concern that George R.R. R. Martin has. Well, George R.R. R. Martin has started his own series of problems. Has he not? Uh, I, th I don't think he has any problems. I, I think, think he that does. he has a very comfortable place where he writes whatever he wants to write uh, how would and... you leave the house because if i saw him in the grocery store you know i would run up you... on him and be like what are you gonna do with daenerys okay so she don't said... hbo it i'm still curling these brushstrokes around if if you can't hear banter we are not your show <laughs> <laughs> but i would wouldn't i you, you sent me to over investigate people who might be him yeah my husband was in it this is step one step one my husband was at a, a film festival, and he thought he saw R.R. Martin, and I actually did say, could you go over and ask him what he's going to do with Daenerys, because I can't go through this HBO thing again. Yeah. 
I mean, no. And John's and, like, I really don't want to do that. I'm like, if you love me, you will go. There was genuine couple pressure being put on me. It was just a look like. So. I'm sure I am not alone in my pressure of people like R.R. R. Martin. <laughs> Let's try this Ooh, so I yes. can show you how to draw it. Patrick Rothfuss is another great one. Uh, Joe, yeah, I've uh, I've watched, I've, I've read a bunch of his stuff. Um, so, gosh, it just distracted me as that came up in here. If uh, you guys are experiencing some video issues, it may just be some uh, buffering. And I'm going to see what I can do on that. So, I'm not exactly sure. I apologize for that today. We have crazy internet, and I'm not sure what end it's on, but we're going to make sure we upload this back after the show to make sure that there's a couple options here. So, and I know if you're experiencing internet issues, like I said, we'll we'll try to upload this again afterwards. Luckily, you uh, the big break that we just had was during the drawing, so the only thing you heard me it was, you just missed out on me waxing philosophical. About color shift, because everybody was missing the color shift talk. Oh, well, so this time we have, th there's clearly some Comcast issues happening in the neighborhood because I can see the stream going up and down. <gasps> Not again. But it, it, it is, but you know, we're there, everyone's Are still hanging still in there? here. Are we still there? Oh, yeah, everyone's still staying in here. It's okay. just It's just not as good as we would hope. So, you know. We may upload some of this because there's some funny banter that they would like. Wait, wait, we want to catch that part. So, oh no, we'll see. But they would, they would like us to to hang out here. We'll hang out. We'll keep going. Yeah. Oh man, that's such a bummer, though, isn't it? It is. But they're they're definitely wanting to see uh the the more of this. All right. Well, we'll keep going. And I'm super sorry. Yeah. If if ever the stream's really bad, we'll just re-upload it and, and take yeah. the hit on the views. It's okay. We get you. We get, we get you, you back uploaded right after this. Yeah, we get you. We get you. And you know, you could you could even contemplate a premiering it. That way, you could everyone could come <laughs> chat again, so that the people who missed it the first time could come chat the second time and talk about. Oh yeah, I remember because I was there when that went out, and we were all talking about that. Okay, well, you guys would have to all promise to show back up. Okay, no, <laughs> <laughs> I will show up. <laughs> So I'm going to show you how to draw this in, but remember, if you need a grid, okay. I did a grid here for you guys. So you just duplicate this in chalk, but I'm going to show you how to freehand it. Wait, wait, it's gnomeception. <laughs> gnomeception, just gnome within gnomes. All right, so what I have here, how I did this is I started with my mushroom, right? I'm going to come over here and see the, the top of the mushroom is about middle of the surface. Middle. Middle of the surface, and I made a nice little half circle shape. I'm just showing you this because mushrooms are super fun to draw. Mm. Just in case you just want to learn how to freehand it. But we have grid and we have traceable and none of it is cheating. Now, when I make this upward thing, this little upward line, yeah. circle, I'm going to come in and almost turn it into a crescent moon for a second. Almost. Mm -hmm. I may want to make sure that I'm coming down far enough on the mushroom that it will feel fat and full and wonderful, which is what you see me doing here. Then I come underneath and I create a four shortened circle. Can you guys see that? The weird shape that we have there? Yeah. I'm going to clean it up for you. Now, I can always clean up my chalk. This is a Dritz sewing tool, hmm. which is just fantastic, and I'm loving it. it I, my community and friends and all kinds of people told me about it and said test it and so I did and I've contacted the company and it doesn't have any wax in it and it's really fantastic. So I know th this the mushroom that this is on. Yes. Is, is I I mean like I I know I don't know how to pronounce it. I know what it is. Let's make a little half circle there and let's give it a stem. Yeah. Coming off to the side. All right. Let's give it a little stem. Mushrooms have stems, like ogres have layers. But it, those are the mushrooms that um, uh, reindeer like to eat. They are the mushrooms that reindeer like to eat. Now, I don't want my hat to go above this point over here. So I need to make a plan for that. I know my nose, which is just a little round circle, comes right here. 
If I know where my nose is, then I can kind of easily do my hat. My hat comes back with two lines. They're almost parallel, but they sort of arc into each other. So not quite. Line up. And then I like to do this wizard hat line up and then here to the point. You guys kind of see that? And of course, we're going to have like the little star coming down, but we'll get him later. Now, I find for the beard, it's just easiest to bring a little line off from the back of the hat as you need to. Back of the hat. Then come under the nose and down to the mushroom and back up. See, so we've got the first little blend of hair. And then it's easy to pick out another lock to drag down. This one is kind of fun. This one comes from here, from a nostril, and maybe goes across the mushroom a bit. And then we have another little, little beard bit coming back here. So that's how we're blowing the beard. And again, blowing the beard. You have a traceable. Where would you find that traceable? On the website in the description below. Gratuitous the self feet plug. are like two little versions of the nose. You make the forward foot a little bit bigger and you make the second backward foot a little bit smaller and that puts everything in perspective. Okay. That is step two. Step two is an excellent place to get some bubbles in because okay. I missed some bubble action up okay. here. I needed to sip my coffee anyway, so I will bubble up and sip my coffee. Okay. So first of all, Patty would like to say she is supportive of this shifty color stream. And that's okay, because we're having a little shifty stream here. I'm having a moment with my coffee, ignore it. <laughs> and Dari Dari failing D, drinking I see coffee. Dari D again, who says, You've saved me at least a thousand dollars by proving these step by by providing these step by step tutorials. Paint and sip workshops cost upward of forty dollars a person, and that that is too costly. Thank you again, big hearts. Well, you're so very, very... Did I lose my puffy? Puffy down! Puffy Don't down. worry about it. It's okay. Okay. So first of all, wait, I'm going to say... It's right behind you. I think I see it on the easel. You're, you're, I'm still looking for it. I don't know, but I think I see the puffy. Okay. You get the puffy and I will... I don't know. <laughs> it's on the easel. It. All right. So what I'm going to say is this. I agree. Um, art lessons can be expensive and they certainly can accrue. And uh, if you were to do like painting parties to learn how to paint, that could be pricey. Though there is something to be said for somebody else washing the brushes. I'm going to just say, and putting out the paint and providing materials and doing all that stuff. I don't know where the puffy okay, is. Okay. Okay. And is it, do we need another no, puffy? Okay, okay. We are, clearly we have so much puffy drama. These are like $15 a piece, which is why it's puffy drama. It's the only reason they, they come right off. They don't actually stick to the mic. And they're like this ridiculous. <laughs> There it is. It just fell off my chest. It's <laughs> puffy. <laughs> All the uh, busty girls understand what just happened to me right now. <laughs> it <laughs> is second coin bag, right? <laughs> I, I I prefer Where to get the lipstick? puffy. Huh? You have to. That's my job to get the puffy. That puffy. That puffy okay, is well, mine. Family show. So, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> So we're painting. We're painting. painting. Step no. two. We just did it. I want to thank everybody so much. And let's get in. Yeah. Just uh, step two. Now we're, we're going gonna... to paint all of this in like we did with the other gnome in. Oh, wait. I got to put out black. Where's black? Paint the psychedelic gnome mushroom. We got to put out the Mars black, though. The reason we do the Mars black is it helps us keep our zones as we're painting our little guy. And then it gives us that sort of flat lining. So it's nice to take a number four round. I'm really glad that so many people paint with this. I have to say that truly. And it's, you can see I'm not being like super crazy tidy. Is it not tidy? Nose. For me, when his nose comes into being <laughs> is when he is, he's my dude. You know, whenever I see the nose, I see, I see the butter beer he's been drinking. He has been drinking butter beer. I mean, because vitamins. That's right. There's a gnome vitamins, if you didn't know. That's why they do that. 
This is actually, I really like this blowing beard quite a lot. I am working on girl gnomes. Those will come up on Mother's Day for sure. Now we're going to do that foot. What was that foot? Bigger one up front, smaller one at the side. Look at you catching perspective, right? Mm. Now we got a mushroom. This mushroom is like, will work for all your mushroom art needs. Pretty good. So we have all that in and that's really gonna help us. Well, we've got our number four brush. Let's rinse it out really well because we don't want any black. And let's add some of our other colors that we might have on our night night gnome. So the first one is let's grab a little bit of our magenta with just a smidge of our yellow. Smidge and some of our white. It's gonna make a great pink color. And let's come around and add some of these in our starry sky. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Just little also dashes. A little more white into it. And I'm going to say thank you to Christine. We're going to save some bubbles for her later. But she said, thank you for sharing your talents and putting a smile on, a, on so many faces. And thank you, Christine, and all of the patrons who are helping us out in there. When you share, give us likes, and help support the channel, it really makes a big deal for us to be able to provide this free art lesson. So you can buy more art supplies. So... Well, yeah, <laughs> and you guys come hang out with us and keep us from being here alone doing this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was still going to happen. After I get the pink in, I'm going to grab some of my yellow and some of my white. I'm going to loosely mix these two. Loosely mix just means that I'm not folding the colors together thoroughly and they're kind of like marbled on the brush. That's all we mean when we say loosely mix. And just curling these around. Now what's fun is sometimes the pink picks up into the yellow. I don't want to carry it too far down because I want room for my fireflies. That's pretty good though. We got a nice little radiating grip of color going around that we like, that we're into. Now I'm going to take just my magenta and guess what? Just paint that nose. Mm. Get, that, that, get that nose all magenta. It can have a little bit of the white in it. But really what we want is a magenta base. Still my number four round, just because it's in my hand. All right? Like it, love it, doing it. I may switch back to my number eight cat's tongue, just because it's bigger. That's all that it is, <laughs> just bigger. And I'm gonna do my dark color of red. I'm gonna take my Doc's purple and my cadmium red and mix them together and paint the mushroom, the hat, and the shoes in that color. Quite dark, isn't it? Yeah. And that's wonderful because that's going to give us a base to paint painterly on. Don't worry if you paint out some of your black lines. You're going to put them back in at the end. These are just helpful to have through, this, through the painting process. How is he doing? Is our stream improved? Mm, yeah, I think so. So we'll have to see if it's like really pixelated when it processes. Because sometimes it's just on our end and then sometimes it's a pixelated show. It's just hard to say. We certainly had some tech issues yesterday. It happens. It does. Tech happens. Gnomes happen, tech happens, things happen. Llamas happen. You know there's going to be a llama painting at some point <laughs> just because now. Because <laughs> now, now someone has respect. <laughs> it's like, pray she respects. <laughs> respect this pray. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I respect turtles. They, they don't generally consider themselves prey. No. Although I guess... Llamas much more are. They're like, they're <laughs> like, like, oh, we're definitely you are mistaken, prey. <laughs> cat. <laughs> that cat over there definitely thinks I'm lunch. I'm just painting this in real fast. That's pretty good. 
Looks nice, right? Mm -hmm. The beginnings, because you want to layer your pieces. You want to layer these colors. You want to you want to get them in early. Let's add our yellow ochre down here. And to do that, I'm going to take mm, a little of my, I think, a little red into my yellow ochre. Not too much. I'm not trying to make an orange. And paint that underneath, but I do want to oh. create almost a glow effect. So this is a great base color. So that was a titch of the cadmium. Now we're going to do something very important once we paint this base color in. I'm going to come here and we're going to create some brush strokes that imply. See what I'm doing. The, mm, the radial spokes the radial of the gills of there. It's just a nice time to start practicing that, getting those in, and then I'm going to come down the stem. That looks good. Down the stem. Now while we're here, let's get some white. Actually, rinse out because there's too much red in there. Let's get some white. And a little of our yellow ochre. And we're going to make our off color beard color and paint in all that beard, okay? Okay. All of it. While you're doing that, I'm going to go over here and say thank you because we've got another wonderful thing said over here. Jerry, she says, gratitude to the Sherpa handlers and the mods oh. for keeping, their, keeping this place safe and happy. And congratulations to Joe. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, we do have an amazing group of people who are, you know, they're Sherpettes, they're painters just like you guys who volunteer their time to help keep these lives, you know, less crazy than maybe some of YouTube's live chat out there. You know, mm -hmm. gaming is a little wild. Gaming chat can be a little wild. Ooh, just doing that well. It can be nice to paint things in an off-white value because what that lets it do is create like that white highlight to imply even hair. Come up here. And again, we know we're going to put our black line back. We're just making sure that we have a base to start from. Right? Mm -hmm. On the edge of my brush. Long strokes. That's another thing that you're noticing me do here. I'm not doing short little strokes like this. I'm doing long flowing strokes tipping out to the end. And so that's helping some of the flow. So when you're listening to an instructor or you're watching, look for long strokes, look for short strokes, look for am I moving the brush a lot or am I pulling it long? You I'll like tell to spin you. it. Yeah. Oh. You spin your brush all the time. John tries to make sure you guys know when I've spinned my brush. You do. You like. When I've spinned it. You're just like rotate, rotate, rotate. Find a new place on the brush to paint with. I'm going to get a little bit of my black. I'm going to thin it with water and swirl it around. I don't want it to be like watercolor, but I want it to be a little thinner than my um, uh, heavy bodied acrylic. And here's how I'm going to do this little string. I'm going to come out a little bit and come down as if it just bounced. So it's got a little S curve in the string. And pretty much the only way I can handle doing a star is I've got to do the star this way. Ah. <laughs> well, I, at least you can. That's how you, I get it in, man. That's my star method. process. I don't think it's changed much since grade school. <laughs> that works, man. I've got to dry that so I can paint the star in white. Okay. Okay, so there we go. And it is okay, there it goes. It's working. I wanted to make sure that my uh little camera thing was working over here. I had a little trouble, a little technical difficulty with that camera. I'm gonna have to work on that. So okay. I think she's drying the whole surface today. So make sure that if you uh if you, you get if you have a chance to get clean clean water right now, because doing that um 
beard with white. That's going to, you're going to want to make sure you have clean water for that. Oh, yes. So this would be too dirty. You want it to be like this. You want to be able to see the bottom of the jar. Mm. I'm going to get some white. I'm just going to paint my star in white. Paint the star in. Yeah, with white. It's great, though, because once I do that little kind of five-point thing, mm -hmm. it lets me um, paint on the inside as if I, like, free-handed a star wonderfully. I did not, but it looks like I did. <laughs> so that's officially step three. Mm, officially. Officially. Officially the step of three. Isn't that cool? So here you'll want everything sort of blocked in in colors. It's okay if you painted out some of your lines. Use long brush strokes down things like the beard. We also use kind of an implied brush stroke to start talking about the radial filaments on the mushroom. We have gotten everything painted in in a base level. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. Now, the nose. Let's take out a little bit of our pink again and quite a lot of our white. And I'm going to come to the top of this and I'm going to paint across. This is my number four round. I'll dip in water to improve my flow. I'm coming across the nose. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to get some of my pure quinacridone and come underneath. Yeah, that kind of creates a highlight shadow mm -hmm. situation going on there. Good. Still with the number four, and I may put out some more white, and the reason I'm going to put out some more white... <laughs> you keep confusing me. You look up at the camera, and I switch down. And then you look down, and I look at you. And it's just... <laughs> you know, do what you got to do, babe. <laughs> do what you... You do you, babe. So I'm going to start putting in some elements of the beard. And one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little of the black into my brush and a little bit of the yellow into it. Because I want a gray. And I'm going to get... I'm going to get into my white. And I'm going to come here. This is just... An, and I'm just trying to get us through kind of more of a... Let's get just a little more black on there because I want to... Have like a shadow under here. See how we're doing? Longer strokes, flicking down, kind of a little shaded under the nose. Mm. Just a little bit more gray. And then also here where the two hairs kind of come together, I'm going to add that value, that shadow. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to make sure this is a very light color. Not totally white, but pretty darn close. There we go. That's better. You guys see that? Yep. For a moment there, they just... Uh, it got moderator. a little green on me, which is why I made an adjustment. They just what? One of our moderators just came in, and... I thought everyone was asking you to use a color, and they were saying hello. <laughs> 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 so I just, you know, got to pay attention to how they're using the context of a color now. <laughs> Sometimes they mean the butterflies. You know, because if you, everyone just shouts in unison a color, you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> yes, yeah, you're like, eh. Hey! Did she, did she do something in the wrong order? Because that could happen. It's happened before. But what you can see me do is just painting this highlight. So you can see how his beard is coming to. And you can always go back into this. And just make sure there's a kiss. I mean a kiss. Because he's got a white beard. 
And I probably will do one more layer of white on there, but I'm going to let that kind of have a rest for a second. And I will switch to my number eight, and I'm going to get some just pure cad red. Come to the top of the hat. Along the line, and here's the deal. I'm going to pull this down in, in a dry brush. See what I'm doing? Mm, and I'm juicy. curving that down. You could do this with any brush. It's just about kind of curving the stroke and letting it be a dry brush so there's sort of a shadow underneath, right? Pulling it down. And this also is like kind of speaking to, and you can very lightly if you want to kind of come over, but you want it mostly to be that bright red, but you can still kind of see some of that shadow there. We didn't even have to work for that at all, did we? Over our mushroom. You don't really need to worry about that too much. It's just nice to have those two colors, but I'm still going to dry brush this so that the paint underneath kind of breaks through. And hopefully John can zoom in and explain yeah. what I mean. You, how you got, how, how you can see the paint come through yeah that what's underneath shows through and it kind of creates a really wonderful resolved painterly look and the issue with this is you just don't want a lot of moisture on your brush that's that's what you're doing you don't want a lot of moisture on your brush rinse out my red and guess where i'm gonna go mm. shoes Dragging that down, see I'm kind of doing a similar thing with that little brush stroke. If you need a little of your purple red to come back, like I got a little light on my shoe there, so I can always come back with a little bit of the opposite way. Just making sure that they are decidedly red. It all should be decidedly red. This next part is kind of fun. I'm going to take a little of my, I need to just put some of my stem back to be able to see what I'm doing. So, it's just so that I know where my radials are going to come out from. What I think is really kind of cool is technically this little gnome is sitting on a flower. Is he? Yep. Because the mushroom cap is actually the flowering fruit of a mushroom. Oh. Well, I'm going to dry this so my flowering fruit black outline doesn't get all up on my stuff here. And if you're drying at home, make sure that, uh, you know, you don't use it on the highest heat setting. You may have heard me talk about this before. That heat can induce color change and you don't want that to happen. Mm -mm. So. I'm going to... Grab this number four round. I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow and some of my titanium white. And here's how we do. I'm going to come in with this. And we're going to radially like a fan. Brush this in. And then as we come around the back side, see, I kind of arc it around. Yeah. Radialness really is important. It is. This is probably, if you're new to painting, maybe the most challenging part. Don't be too hard on yourself. If it's like the first time you've ever attempted to do this, right? It's one of those things that seems deceptively simple, but has a little bit of challenge. Just on the toe of my brush. I do want a little more moisture in there because I, I want to be able to see it. And you can see I'm just blending that in and doing that radial around. I don't want a line here. And so sometimes I'll even come on the side of my brush just to make sure that that 
edge line isn't there because what I want to accentuate are these little radial lines coming in. Mm. I'm going to take my number eight cat's tongue and I'm going to get a little bit of a similar color. This time I'm going to mix some of my yellow ochre into it. A little bit of white. And I'm going to quick say thank you to Jen K. Thank you for, she, she was just saying that she loves you. She loves the art and she was asking if we had a violin and I posted up to link some stuff, but I didn't want to forget to say thanks. Yes, we do have a violin. I think. You did a guitar. It was which a guitar. Looked a lot like a violin. And that's what I, I posted it up there and I was Darn like, it. there you go. It's a violin or just squint your eyes. It's a very large, odd shaped violin. <laughs> I'm going to brush my brush strokes across there and I'm going to come back into my little yellow ochre here and look I'm gonna pull this back up because the base of the mushroom we want it to be darker right Then this little yellow part here that's what we're going for that's what else we want you know I don't know yellow star oh yeah door well, just... would be so proud <laughs> okay I'm fine we were wondering what the little thing was there was we didn't get a look at that it looked really good earlier. There we go. So there's his yellow night night star. <gasps> step four. I get to sip my coffee because I got through step four. And yeah. we can we can say thank you, all you awesome patrons I'm for supporting it. us. Can I say thank you and bubble and sip? Yes. Sip and bubble. For 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 all of the guys. I'm gonna scroll back up here and say I get Dari, Dom Dom. We need like bubble ones on our on our Jerry, website store. And Jen and Patty. And we've had a lot of supporters today. I can't even scroll back up to see everybody. It's Thank fight. you for the gnome support. It Thank is. Thank you. We love that. Thank you. It's so appreciated. Chippa dance. Chippa dance. I don't know what you're doing. I'm just wiggling. You're just, I mean, wiggling. like, I never All right, know what I'm going to turn around think, now and stop think, being dorky. <laughs> I think that you're going to turn around because, like, I'm just dorky. And I then you're like, I'm dorky. No, I'm going to persist here. I'm going to continue to dance. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, you're going to dance. I feel like my gnome needs stripes. <laughs> it was really interesting. When I did him, I was looking at his hat, and I was like, you know what he needs? Right here at this tip. He needs some stripes. Those are racing stripes. They are. They super are. I'm also going to come through, and I'm going to add some dots. Number four. I'm using my round brush just because it's easier to kind of make that dot. If you have my pouncers, you could probably just use the small pouncer. <laughs> but this is nice to create spaces, you know, in and out. Like if I want a dot kind of peeking out from his beard, there it is. And I definitely want to dot at the corner. And then some more other dots, like a dot. Sometimes I've got to add a little water to my brush to improve the flow of paint off of it. So it'll make a nice smoother dot. See how when it's not dry, it makes a smoother thing? Mm-hmm. And maybe I'll add one there. Just because on this one, it just needed a space. It's really about like just finding these like open spots where you're like, you know what you need? A, a dot. dot. <laughs> For sure. This here needs a reflection. Little pull stroke right at the top of the nose. For sure. The star needs a little highlight in the center. You know, that makes it feel like a little bit yellow and glowy. You can always come back with more yellow paint and work that out. So it's nice. And I just like to have a little glow in the center of my star. Uh, 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 uh. I'm going to come in with another layer of white beard. 
just a bit of long strokes, which you can see kind of really show over this off gray that we did. This just helps show that it's it's hair. That's all we're doing. Long strokes, pulling around. Drive your brush like a matchbox car. The other thing I want to do is I want to come in with a little more of my yellow and my white, just more highlighted. A bit lighter than what I initially did. You can see that I'm bringing in another highlight of that little radial of the mushroom. I'm curving it around as it comes forward. It kind of bends the opposite way. So you'll notice that when I come to the back, I kind of bow downward. And then when I come over the top, I kind of bow upward. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. And let's also maybe put a little bit of highlight right here at the top of yellow highlight. See what we have? We can always get a little more yellow into it. Not very far down. We want a nice ombre. Looks pretty darn good. And I'm going to start the green grass. Let's use our number eight cat's tongue for that. Or you could use your number four round or whatever brush makes you comfortable with grass. And I'm going to take my burnt sienna and my phthalo green together and I make a very deep color. And I'm going to come here and brush up some big, wonderful grass strokes. So these first ones curve, they come to the tip and you'll notice that they taper off. And then sometimes when I come around, I will add them going another direction. So that, you know, they've got lots of personality, right? Just give them a little bit of a, oh, there's grass. The beginnings. Got a little bit aggressive there with my grass this time. Hmm. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes you're like, grass! It grows. Everything needs a black outline. Why is that? Because it helps define the shapes. This is a lot like when you, you know, see comic art or graphic art. A lot of times you'll see black lining. Helps define each zone. Nice long stroke there. Doesn't that look good? It does. It makes him have a little, like, shadow under his eye there. Little touches that you need. Now, interesting, I'm going to do an interesting thing on the top. Watch me go. I'm going to be on the toe of my brush. I'm going to come back, but I kind of go past my line a bit. Hmm. That folds the hat. Interesting. This, I did it again. Oops. I did it again. Two folds. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Everybody be good to Brittany. <laughs> There's his little nose. I'm going to get a drop of water. I generally thin this about one drop of water at a time. I get one drop with my brush. Mm. And then I come in and I, I get it till I, I work it into my paint until I get a consistency that I like that's fluid on my, my brush. And you can kind of see how instead of clumping around the brush, it's just kind of like an ink into the brush. Nice lines. If you get too much water, then it doesn't adhere well. So you've just got to find that balance of thinning and keeping your heavy body paint. Most paint companies will tell you how much water their paint is tolerant to. But acrylic paint is made to be thinned with water, even though many, many artists like to thin it with um, medium. And that's okay too. They're both okay. Mm. 
So some nice little bits there happening. Interesting stuff's gonna happen all around the mushroom too. So first, definitely outline all of your dots. Oh yeah? Give them that contrastness. Yeah. I mean in nature I don't think they have a black outline at all, but it certainly helps in the artwork. See you know how that does? It just pops them. Yeah. Gives them a zone. If you don't have nice coverage on your dots, you can always do two coats of paint. So don't feel like you can't. And then the next cool thing is I'm going to come around here and I'm going to come back and with these, I'm going to create like a black line that talks about the mushrooms. Look at that. Mm. You kind of see the arcs down back into what's going on. And then as we come up here, we. Blend the opposite ways. And that gives the underneath of our mushroom a bit of that look. I may come back and make a little adjustment. I'm doing kind of thinning those lines. Mm. It's a nice thing to do. I don't want to take them out completely, but it's nice if they feel a little refined. Enjoy the little touches. Now, the last thing that I'm going to be doing are the highlights on the grass and the glow bugs. Um, I just want to refine this one more time here. It's just bugging me. What I'm doing is I think near the top, it's nice if these lines are a little thinner and more delicate is all that it is. Just feels a little more beardy and yeah. fussy. Sometimes you're fussy. It's okay to be fussy. So that is going to be burm, 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 step five. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Good, yeah. All right. So for step six, it's going to be about getting some highlights going on the grass, right? And, and making sure it kind of feels like maybe this mushroom's glowing a little bit and there's just different sources of light. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and take my green that has a little bit of burnt sienna mixed into it, right? But I'm going to get a bunch of my cad yellow over here. Can you see this? Hmm. And I'm going to come into this mix on the tip of my number eight cat's tongue and make some of these lighter highlights. Aren't those nice? Yeah. They just give it a little bit of highlight. You can come back with some just thalo green. Ah, oh, some grass. I like to say grass, 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 grass. I like to also sometimes take a little yellow, green, and white. And add this one last little pop of highlight. Can you guys see this? Mm-hmm. A little touch. Just a little whip. Wiki wiki. <laughs> 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 Yes. How can you have a magical night night seat without fireflies? So get your yellow, load it onto your number four round, and make a dot here, here, here. This will need to dry, so I'll hit over here first, here, and then eventually here, but I may need to hit it with a hairdryer to get it to work because I don't want to move green all around. Mm. And when I have that going, what I'm going to do is come around with, again, circular brush strokes. See what I'm doing? Ew. Circular brush strokes. They're not circles all the way around. They're a broken circle. That's important. Make sure your circle is broken. Some will be smaller. And some will be larger.
Wow, that turned out really nice. And then next time, well, we've got the uh, the lucky gnome coming up, but then after that, on the Mother's Day gnome, we're going to work on braids and stuff like that. How fun will that be? That'll be exciting. Yes. I know. Excitement. All right, keep going. You guys are doing great. And, you know, Patey, I, I think it's Patey Campbell. Is how you say your name? So she just sent a wonderful supporting high five to us as a patron supporter. So thank you so much. We really thank appreciate it. Thank you. You deserve support. bubbles. Absolutely. That's bubble for bubble. you. Bubble for I'll those. I'll bubble for Ch -ch -ch. you. I'll bubble for you. I'll bubble for you. I'll bubble for you. Don't worry. I'm not going to get content ID. YouTube doesn't think I sing well enough to collect any money. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Does does the Sherpa always stand up to pain? Um, no. No, she's Often. she's bullied by her pain all the time. She has no ability to say no to her pain. <laughs> Don't believe it. It just Depends walks all over her. Watercolor, I like to sit down for uh, certain media projects where stuff needs to be very flat to dry. I like to sit down. I really do love my easel time, though. Easel time is happy time. So when I'm designing for the show, most often I would be standing up here at the easel. I am taking white with a little bit of yellow, and I am adding little glowing highlights in the inside of my glow circles. Mm. Smoke and circles glowing. Smoke and circles. Just a nice way to do fireflies. You can use this anytime. I won't be like... No! <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you do anything like uh, Reynolds, he, he handles fireflies a little differently. Hmm. Captain Reynolds. I don't remember this. Malcolm Reynolds? No, what? What? He is the captain of the Firefly. Oh! My, you broke my brain. First, you just should have said, I'm a leaf on the wind, and then I would have known exactly what you meant. And then secondly, I'm just like thinking fireflies. I know. You're not thinking spaceship. <laughs> so my brain was not connecting it. And I'm like going through everything like real fast, but I hadn't gotten past expanse. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to sort what you're referring to. And you can always come back with even yellow again. Yeah, I think it's just really fast. Yeah, it's just nice to, you know, play with it. Be playful. These two colors play well together. And the technique plays well. So feel like you've got that. That looks pretty. Do we feel like that looks pretty firefly-tastic? I think it is. I think it's pretty fantastic, too. Do you guys think it's fantastic? Do you guys feel good about what you painted? He, yeah, for sure. I'm going to put out a little fluid paint because I don't want to fight the signature. <laughs> I may not my not favorite, be... and grab my favorite signature brush, which is a number one monogram liner. I do like the ones uh, by Silver, but I'm not saying they're the only good brush on the planet. Just saying it's one I very much enjoy and have relied on for a while. And I come here on the tip of my brush, and I'm just going to sign down here. You know what, Sherpa? Mm. I may not be a leaf on the wind, but I am a gnome on the mushroom. You really? Oh my gosh, this was fine. It turned out fun. great. Wait, let's really? get it where it goes. There it goes. So I love that we, let's celebrate that we did it. We did it. We, we did, did it. it. We did it. We painted a painting. Yeah, we did it. We did it. You're so dorky on a Saturday. Because it's gnomon time. It's gnomon time. Rolling with my gnomies. It's gnome okay, time so like gnome time. Work it you decide. Okay, then we have nothing to do. I am happy. Uh, so hopefully this will process smoothly. If it doesn't, we will uh, um, re-upload one. Premiere. We'll premiere one. Yeah. So if, 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 if it doesn't do well, we'll try premiering it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Hopefully tomorrow for the Rose where the internet works. That's the goal. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.